Hey guys, welcome to Bo Schooling with Queenie and I'm here sitting in my kitchen because <laughs> my boys are recording their videos so I didn't want their voices to get captured in my... Um, today is a work day for all of us so I thought okay let's just shoot a quick email up, shoot a quick <laughs> video um, to say hi and to also talk about a very very important topic that I think um, for those of you who are considering world schooling or who are already starting on your world schooling journey, you need to listen to this. Today, I'm going to talk about de schooling. Okay, so you're probably talking, you're probably thinking, what on earth is de schooling? I mean, I've heard of homeschooling, unschooling. What what's de schooling? So de schooling is a bit like detoxing, where and it happens a lot when you know our children have gone to school for a few years and you try to pull them out. When you try to pull them out, there is a huge um, transition process that they need to undergo. The longer they have been in school, the longer and the more painful the de-schooling process is. Understanding what the de-schooling process looks like will help us become more you know, um, patient with them, more understanding and to give them more space to transition. So, you know, it's, it's very much like detoxing from carbs and so have going like carb free after being dependent on carbs for a few years or, you know, going on a very strict exercise regimen after not doing any exercise for like half of your lifetime. It's something to do with transition. And um, the thing about school is um, if you have spent, you know, a huge chunk of your childhood going to school like I have, then you know, it's it's even harder for us to de-school our children because we don't really know what it looks like. So the first thing you need to do is to de-school yourself. <laughs> I know I have a friend who talks about this and I'm going to interview him as soon as my internet allows me to. Uh, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, we need to de-school ourselves first. And so what, do you, what, what does de-schooling look like? So when you go to school, a lot of times we have you know, resolve to think that we are not capable of thinking for ourselves. We are not capable or uh, capable of um, or skilled at overcoming problems. Um, and our intellectual resilience is not there. Uh, we are taught what to think. We are taught what to learn. And it's very clear between learning and everything else okay so initially when my boys were in school and you know i took them out and um you know we started to de-school and if i asked them things like so what did you learn today they'll be like i learned nothing it's not that you know i'm like how did you not learn anything we just went to a bee farm we just you know went to a museum we just did this we just did that there's so much information how can you not learn anything but the thing is that it's not that they didn't learn anything, it's just that in school, we were taught to think that learning only happens within the classroom walls. If there's a teacher in standing in front of you, um, standing in front of the class, in front of you, telling you what to think, and if there's homework and there's assessment, then whatever information you input into your brain and can successfully regurgitate it, that's learning. So the whole process of de-schooling is about moving away from that. It's about finding yourself and trying to figure out what are some of the tools you, you use to learn, what are some of your learning skills or, you know, in other terms, metacognition, you know, how do you problem solve and trying to figure all these things out. Because once you've figured it out, once you've figured out what are some of the tools that you use to solve problems, then, you know, you have properly transitioned. Once you have learned that learning is all around us and it's impossible to go a day without learning, then you have properly de-schooled, <laughs> okay? So a lot of times, uh, let me just tell you what it looks like. A lot of times um, when, we'll, when, when people decide to work with their children, they get so excited about it. They're like, yay, we're going to travel the world. We're going to go to museums and do all this fun stuff. My children are going to want, want to be out every day and exploring the streets of you know, a certain village. But then what happens is when they pull their children out of school, depending on when they did it, like, you know, how many years after the children been in school, they will face the, the de-schooling process where the children are lost. They suddenly look around them and they're like, 
I feel so alone. I'm not surrounded by children. You know, I miss my friends. I want to go back to school. <laughs> so a lot of parents get heartbroken when their children say, I want to go back to school because they have, school has been such a big part of their life. They spend so many hours there every week. It's a big chunk of their life. And so when you take them out and they haven't found their new normal yet, they will want to go back. And it's the same thing as abusive relationships. A lot of us have been in relation, abusive relationships for many, many years. Coming out feels kind of strange. And before we transition, we still want to keep going back. That's why people, a lot of people don't leave abusive relationships for the same reason. So it's the same thing as that as well. In school, there's a lot of you know, uh, structure. There's a lot of people telling us what to think, what to do, when to study, when to learn. And so a lot of this becomes a part of our system. So the de-schooling process is very, very tricky because it, it requires us to shift from that kind of oppression and control to taking back control for ourselves and deciding for ourselves what we want to learn. And I mean, I can't speak for my boys, but that is the de-schooling process I had to go through with them. So they de-school, I had to de-school to properly transition to world schooling slash unschooling slash whatever it is that you want to do that's not similar to the school system. So yeah, so that was, it was really tricky. You know, a lot of times I read about, you know, parents who uh, want to world school their children, but they cannot adjust because they suddenly lose all their friends and they suddenly realize that, um, there's nothing interesting going on, you know, nobody's telling them what to do. So they, they're totally lost. So a lot of times, if your children are a little bit older, like tweens or teenagers, they will be stuck to screen time because the change, that switch is, it's very stressful for them. And in case you haven't noticed, a lot of us and children turn to screen to de-stress. <laughs> well, actually, it's not really to de-stress. It just makes the whole situation worse. But, you know, they need a period of time where they need to do whatever they want. And then they realize, oh my God, I have all this time. You know, it used to be, I only have weekends to myself. So I try to be on screen time as much as I can because that is my time. But now I have so much of my time back. So yes, I will have time for screen time, but I also have time for all this other fun stuff, learning about stuff, you know, figuring out languages and figuring out how different things work and looking into things that I've never looked into before, like reading books that are for people that are way above my age and, you know, learning languages that I've never learned before and learning to interact with people from a different culture and different language. Uh, unlike before. So all these things is a step out of their comfort zone, our comfort zone. And in order to do that, we need to find our grounding first. Okay, so the de-schooling process is that process of finding your grounding to learn how to ground yourself and to be okay with not having an oppressive system decide how we learn or define how we learn. And for us to realize that, oh, I can take care, I can take back control of what I want to learn now. So that is the whole, you know, de-schooling process. So if you're thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to world school and I'm going to put my children out of school and it's going to be smooth sailing. Um, <laughs> just cater for that, that de-schooling process because there will come a point in time where they just want to be in front of the screens. It's going to be so hard to get them out. Uh, my advice is to de-school yourself first, okay? So if they're old enough, like my boys, they're kind of, you know, pretty independent uh, by the time we started world schooling. Um, a lot of times, I'll just leave them at home or I may leave them with, you know, a teacher in a class that they may want to go to and then I'll just go off and do my own stuff. Um, so I picked up flamenco dance by myself because I mean, I, it's not fair for me to drag them along. So I have flamenco dance classes and I learn different languages and I go to cooking classes no matter where I am to learn all the recipes of the local people. And so I had to go through this process of unschooling myself first. And while I was going through the, that process, the boys saw how I was coping. In fact, I think of the three of us, I coped better with the whole you know, de-schooling process than they did because they're still at the phase where they were mostly taught what to think and how to think. So yeah, so when they watch me do stuff like that, they suddenly realize, oh, you know, mom's, you know, gone off and, you know, done all this 
fun things that she comes back and talks non-stop about. Um, I want some of that too. And so they started doing things on their own and they're like, oh, mom, I really want to learn this. You know, can I do an online course about this? Oh, I really want to go and join this group. Can I go with them? And so they started taking control of their own learning as well. And I mean, I don't want to say learning because we, if, you know, I've been to school, so I separate learning from living. <laughs> But actually, they're both of the same. So yeah, so this is our life now. We are constantly learning from people, from the things that we come in contact with. Yesterday, we were coming back on the shuttle bus and we met a nice New Zealand couple who's been to most of the places we've been to. We're exchanging notes, we were exchanging contact, we're having really interesting conversations. Um, and my boys were listening and they're like, wow, mom, people have to wait so long like until they're retired to travel and, and we get to do this now. I'm like, yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so we're constantly learning and we're constantly living. And um, this is something that we absolutely enjoy doing. But I have to be honest with you, when I pulled my boys out of school, they were very, very anxious because of the, you know, the home, the oppression in the home environment, the oppression in school environment. And so, you know, when I pulled them out, my eldest son was already in uh, secondary one and my youngest one was in elementary five. So year five and year seven, and they were um, going through a really hard time at school. And, um, and so when I pulled them out, because they have already been in school for like five to seven years, the whole de-schooling process took one year. Yes, it is. It was very painful. It's, it's a lot about, I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to stay at home. You know, why do we have to go out? Why do we have to go on this excursion? You know, do we really have to go for classes? So it was a lot of that. And you know, if I did not understand the de-schooling process, which I did at the time, but not to the extent that <laughs> I experienced it. Um, but yeah, you know, understanding that and focusing, choosing to focus more on my own de-schooling process and giving them space to figure out themselves, that really helped a lot. It helped me to transition really nicely and it also helped them to find their own way to transition in their own ways. So that was kind of, you know, that was kind of nice. And after we've transitioned, it was a lot smoother. Of course, you know, now there's a huge world schooling community there are lots of blogs and videos like this on youtube they can read up about you know how pe different families uh, will school or unschool but back in the day when i did it i did not know that such communities exist i thought i was the only one who did it so i didn't have a lot of support i read a lot of books that were based on self-directed you know that were championing self-directed learning and were championing autonomy um, in young children and I was reading books about adultism and childism and you know making sure that you know children are brought up in an environment where they have a lot of freedoms to explore and to learn and to think and to speak up and so I've, I've read all of that and it totally makes sense to me how unschooling is very much um, a part of that and it also made me see how schooling was uh, denying my children of the basic human rights um, to freedoms and so um, it, so yeah I've come a really long way you know in the last three years that we have been you know world schooling I've come a really long way myself as a person not just as a mom or a world schooling mom but as a person myself I've learned more in the last three years of world schooling than I have before that <laughs> that's like 35 years of my life uh, went to school, went to college, I learned some stuff in college. I met some friends who have helped me transition very nicely to adulthood. But, you know, the, the richness of the learning that, that I've experienced in the last three years of being immersed in different cultures and just learning how different people live their lives and struggle with work and, you know, looking at different societies and you know, how their healthcare system works and how they look out for the needy and, you know, looking at sustainability, about the environment. It has helped me become the person that I think I've always wanted to become. I think I'm the best version of myself today. Um, and I don't think that, you know, and I'm trying to shoot these videos to explain to you so that you can see a little bit of what I see, but I don't think anything will come close to you exploring this beautiful planet on your own. I mean, not like on your own as a solo, but you know, 
figuring it out, figuring it out um, how people live and how different cultures exist and how we are so different and yet so similar and how you know systems are put together for a reason even though they don't always meet those purposes um, and how the people move around these systems to try and survive and to provide for their families and how you know religions are so vast and they are so varied and yet they are so similar in that you know every religion wants people to be better and to be calm and to be peaceful and you know how People can be so brilliant to invent music and art and food. <laughs> that is just so interesting. So I have, you know, all this learning just gets me so excited. All this living a life that's full of learning experiences is so exciting to me. It fuels who I am because I've always been the one who is asking questions, who is thinking and processing and um, these traits obviously are not valued in school when I was growing up because you know we we're taught to shut up and sit still, don't fidget, you know, and don't ask questions because it's usurping the teacher's authority to question them. And so this is a space for me to explore and to ask questions and to investigate freely with no agendas whatsoever. I'm not doing this for school project. I'm not doing this for scores or marks or assessments or tests. I'm doing this because I want to learn how to be a better person and learning about people and how they live makes me a better person. Okay, so I hope that, you know, I have explained my de-schooling process somewhat well, but it is something that you will have to go through if you're thinking about world schooling your children. So if you're seeing behaviors in them that are not typical for the first few months, depending on how long they've been in school, the longer they've been in school, the longer the de-schooling process will be. Um, and yeah, so you know, if you're seeing a little bit you know, uh, of a shift in their behaviors, they just know that they're adjusting and they're transitioning. Um, and this metamorphosis is beautiful when they come out of it at the end. So just be patient and trust the process. And if you have any questions about, you know, some of the things that you're seeing during the de-schooling process, just feel free to send me a message. Okay, so I hope that this helps prepare you if you haven't started yet. And if you have started, I'm hoping that this message will reassure you um, so that you, you know, you, you don't feel like, oh my God, I made a mistake. <laughs> my son wants to go back to school. My daughter wants to, you know, go back to her friends. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping that that will help you feel a little bit better because that, that's just what we all go through as part of the de-schooling process. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and I, um, I'm really glad I get to share, you know, what I've learned during the past few years of world schooling with you and I think de-schooling is a big piece of the puzzle that it's not often considered until it's too late. So I'm hoping that by giving you this small piece of the puzzle that you factor in some of the adjustment period that you need to cater to and make adjustments for. Um, and yeah, I mean, just try and simplify your life as much as possible during the first few months of transitioning to world schooling because we have to find our own um, grounding we need to we need to start creating our own systems and start understanding how we can take charge of our own, own learning and our own lives and that takes time it, it does it takes time so just be patient with the whole process okay thanks guys and i'll see you again next week bye